Hello and welcome everybody to my first Let's Play, my first YouTube video. Yay. Um, it's a game for my avatar. It's a shmup, so it's only so good. It's kind of horrible. Music's good. I hope you can hear it. I'll probably mess with it and keep recording until you can hear the music decently. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. Sunsoft presents a Paragon's production. Project S11, the Game Boy Color. Yay! I've played this game to oblivion. Uh, yeah. Difficulty set setting would have been a nice addition to this game. It's not bad, but that would have taken it from decent to okay, I guess, I mean. Okay, let's start. Here's our backstory. Welcome. I'm not gonna fast it because every time I do it then it skips. On screen, you can't see the enemy threat. Not much is known besides that these aliens are hostile. In order to avoid the interception of our tech docs, we need you to deliver them personally to our forest base. At your disposal is the top secret ship developed under Project S11. Yes, this is a shmup, so of course it's one super ship versus an entire alien race. You know, my problem with shmups is not that they're kind of cheesy, but honestly, if I have a ship that can do something that the entire military of the world can't do, which is, you know, basically fight off an alien invasion. I'm not going to come home and be happy with medals. I want to come home and take over the world. You know, maybe that's just a villainous side in me, but hello. I have more power than every military rat and every military on the planet. I just wiped out the entire planet with the aliens. I'll just, you know, anyone that decides to say, yeah, you can't rule the world, I'll just wipe them out. Anyway. This is my favorite weapon, kind of crummy, at low levels. Uh, I lost the manual ages ago, so I don't know the proper names for the most of the weapons, but oh well. That's a bomb power, it gives you more bombs, it's your, you know, kill all. It doesn't actually kill everything on the screen, but most everything. You start out with the laser, this is the second most powerful version of the laser. I will mostly be using, of course, the purple DNA helix laser doom thing and the flamethrower. Mostly just because they are awesome and they pretty much break the game. Another thing that breaks the game is realizing that the auto fire of this game is horrible. The prime rate with the auto fire is nothing compared to tapping the fire button. When I get to a point where I can show you a good example of that, I will do so. Oh, there's the flamethrower. The awesome thing about the flamethrower is it goes out a little bit and then comes back. Those shots that come back still damage your enemies. So you can end up using it as a shield. The closest thing is a shield to get in this game. You get armor, so you don't need a shield. Yeah. It's already not a one hit kill kind of game. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning about the flamethrower is that it's like Bowser's fire from Smash Brothers. It's an analogy that I didn't want to use, but it's the best one that there is. The longer you hold the fire button, the closer to your ship it gets. So that's why you tap with it. Much. See, that's auto fire. One shot on the screen at a time. Really so. And then a whole row of shots. I'm taking the whole row of shots. I mean, much better. Uh, there's probably a little bit of delay on the game sounds because I'm recording with a mic. Yeah, I couldn't get it to work any other way because I have a crappy laptop. And apologies for any quality issues I really don't care. I've been trying to record this for three days now and 
Yeah. It actually started four days ago. Not that any of you will probably ever care. Not that I care. I'm just saying. Yep. Little purple hover tank things that look like ladybugs, I guess. I always thought they looked like ladybugs. I'm kind of rethinking that now, but... This is a Sonic Wave thingy. The best auto fire rate of the game. Certainly the biggest range, but it's also the weakest weapon in terms of sheer hit power. Power uh, the weapon that I hope not to show you is the missile. Horrible fire rate. High power horrible fire rate. The fire rate kills it. That's what the missile looks like, only it's mine. And yeah, the bosses aren't that tough. In fact, I'm not going to waste a bomb, even though not each bombs waste, because the next level it refills to two. I'll get through the first two levels and then I'll cut the video off. Probably be close to ten minutes. I hope. If it's not and it's short, too bad. If it's too long, I suppose I'll have to cut it somehow. I don't want to, but I could always re-record. I really don't want to do that. I have played these first two levels so many times trying to get the calling program to work, but yeah. If I didn't have these levels memorized before, I do now. Ah, uh, if you want to hear the background music better, somebody has posted all of the background music on YouTube. It's really good for a Game Boy game. It's not great, I mean it's low quality sound, but it's good for a Game Boy game. Only problem I would say is that it does have a tendency to get stuck in your head, and I think we all know what that's like. Song stuck in your head for a week and a half. Hey, flamethrower. There's a flamethrower for this level. I like the flamethrower for this level. This game is easy. And one thing I notice about this game that has always annoyed me. The weapon power never gets beyond four bars. They leave that whole big space for weapon power, and no matter how long you go without dying, because when you die your weapon power decreases, no matter how many power-ups you get, it never fills beyond that. Same goes with your armor. It never fully fills up the gauge. The programmers got lazy, I guess. Programmers or designers. It's always annoyed me. Probably shouldn't. Just aesthetics. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Do not mob me. Please do not mob me. Yeah. Let's see. Normally, I don't use a flamethrower for this level. For that reason. They tend to take, tend to take too long to kill them. All day, I've been having to use a flamethrower because the purple one doesn't kill them fast enough. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've had this game for years. I haven't played it in probably two, three years. And I've gone through my games and it's like, hey, I haven't played that in a while. I think I'll play. And I decided, hey, I want to do a let's play. And I decided, you know what? I know this game like the back of my hand. I play it constantly. Forget it. I'll just let's play this. Not a good game, but it's one that I know. It's, to me, that's the best game to let's play. One that you know. The best would be one that you know but you haven't beaten. But, well, yeah. I don't have many of those. Honest, I don't have a whole lot of good games. But that's mostly because I despise first-person shooters, and yeah, it's only because I suck at them. And again, I did grow up on ColecoVision and Atari. Hey, bees. Why does every schmuck have an enemy that looks like an insect? It's like necessary. This enemy has to look like an insect. I, I, I've even seen some shops where the enemies are all sea life based, and yet there's an insect thrown in with the fish. What, what the heck? Makes no sense. 
but shmups rarely make sense, I suppose is the real point. The shmups. You assume that you're going to be spending too much time dodging bullets. Which will be the issue with the last boss of this game. I normally end up down one life and a sliver of health left. I didn't. Earlier today when I fought it, earlier today I just obliterated it. Ah! Yay! Alright, wait for the next level to come up and then I'll pause the game and. Come on. Hurry up. Mission 3 The WAP Forest. Yes, The WAP. Okay, I'm going to cut the video off there, and I will see you all next time.